Today, I'm going to a beauty contest. Okay, so I don't think I'm gonna be winning a beauty contest anytime soon, which is okay because the beauty contest isn't for me, it's for these gals right here. So last year I made a video about cows going to the Alps in the spring and then coming home in the fall. Well, the cows in the video were from the city of Einsiedeln, which is kind of in central Switzerland, and it's also the city where I live. Every year after all the cows come home from the Alps, all the farmers get together and do a livestock show. And this year, I was invited to come along. These fall livestock shows have been a tradition going on for many years. On a normal year, over a thousand cows would attend this event. Traditionally, the farmers would dress their cows up in those big old bells and then walk them up through the city. Although in recent years, it's become far more practical to just put your cows in a trailer and drive them there, leaving only a few farmers that still walk their cows. During the show, the cows are separated into different age ranges. Judges choose the winners based on different categories. And then at the end of the day, the most beautiful of them all is chosen and they designate her Miss Einsiedel. Really, this is a pretty cool event. It gives the whole farming community a chance to get together, talk, have a good time. Usually there's live music and food. But there's something that kind of stood out as a little bit strange to me. Now, I'm no cow expert. In fact, I don't know much about cows at all. But I do know that there are different kinds. There's like black and white ones and red and white ones and so on. Why only brown cows? What's up with the brown cows? Using my amazing German skills, or uh, the lack thereof, I was able to find out that this cow show was specifically for two breeds. The OB and the brown Swiss. But then walking around all of these cows, some have horns and some don't. Other than that, they look all exactly the same. What's the difference between the two breeds? I learned that the, uh, the horns don't matter. It's just a style choice. The OB is a little bit smaller and stockier of a cow. And the brown Swiss is American. Wait, what? There's a cow called the brown Swiss that lives in Switzerland, but is from America. What's up with that? So when I got home, I started Googling, and uh, I never thought that I'd make a video about cow breeds, but uh, it's actually kind of interesting. So here you go. As it turns out, there's a whole bunch of cattle breeds that have originated here in Switzerland. Now, going back to like prehistoric times, we don't actually know that much about the cows that were here, but we do know that there were cows. Archeologists have found domesticated cattle bones in some of Switzerland's oldest known settlements dating back to the Bronze and Iron Age. These cattle were quite a bit smaller than what we're used to today, but it's thought that all of the breeds coming out of this area originated with these ancient cattle. It's thought that these small cattle mixed with cattle coming in with the Romans, and then after the fall of the Roman Empire, mixed with some of the cows coming in from the Germanic tribes. Up to this point, most farms were very small, usually with just a couple of cattle. That all changed in 934 when Einsiedeln Abbey was founded. The abbey started cattle farming, but on a much larger scale. And they didn't just farm, they also started selectively breeding these cows, looking to produce a more productive cow for the area. The ideal cow of the time was more of a multi-purpose cow, one that could produce high quality milk for dairy products, but then at the same time also be good for meat production and pulling a plow or cart. It's about this time that we start seeing references to all brown cows. The earliest depiction we have of these cows dates back to around the 1400s. And then later on, we have records of the Abbey rejecting orders for multicolored cows, but then accepting other orders for very large brown cattle. Einsiedeln Abbey and their cattle breeding actually played a role in Switzerland becoming the country that it is today. Over time, the Abbey had amassed a large quantity of cattle, and with a lot of cows comes the need for a lot of grazing land. And they had used up all of their grazing land, so the workers kind of started to creep into Canton Sweets. Sweets didn't really like their land being stolen, so there was kind of some squabbling going back and forth between the Abbey and Sweets. And then eventually the guys from Sweets just came over the mountain and uh, plundered the Abbey. It solved the problem, but it also kind of created another problem. The problem was the Habsburgs. They were the military power of the area and the Abbey was in their territory. 
Eventually, they came over to Canton Suites to give them a little show of some military force. There was a battle, and the Habsburgs lost. Badly. This battle was the first time that the three original cantons were actually able to stand up for themselves and win a military victory. It's a pretty big deal in Swiss history. The three cantons stayed and grew into the country of Switzerland that we know today, and these brown cows stayed right along with it. And really, these brown cows were perfect for Switzerland. Their brown fur gave them a natural protection against the sun. They also had really strong legs and durable feet, which really helped them out in these alpine conditions. Most farms in Switzerland were made fairly small. They really benefited from having that multi-purpose cow, so the breed remained fairly unchanged until 1869. In 1869, the first of these brown cows made their way to America. A guy by the name of Henry Clark brought seven pregnant cows in one bull to Massachusetts. In America, the breed caught on pretty quickly. More cows were brought over from Switzerland, and then somewhere along the lines, American farmers started referring to them as the Brown Swiss. Now, these American farmers weren't so interested in having a multi-purpose cow. What they were really interested in was the high-quality milk that the brown Swiss produced. So the farmers started selectively breeding these cows, looking specifically for their dairy qualities. And they were very successful. This new breed rapidly spread across the United States and then eventually back to Switzerland, where Swiss farmers were also looking to increase their dairy productivity. The American brown Swiss was mixed with the OB, or original brown. Today, most of these brown cows that you see are a mix between the OB and the brown Swiss. However, at least here in Canton Suites, many farmers still keep a few of the original breed in their herds, just to keep the breed alive. Today, the brown Swiss breed has spread all over the world and has an estimated population of 14 million, making it the second most popular dairy breed in the world. And it all started right here in central Switzerland. I think that's pretty cool. Thank you for watching. Have a good one.